episode 15 of the Whitlings prototype. There are a couple issues we're still de well, we are still dealing with the words. Um, still have our guy that will walk just straight off the edge into forever, which is a little bit unfortunate. <clears throat> and that was my original plan today. I thought what I really want to do is fix the pathing system. And then I started to consider it, and I realized more important than fixing the pathing system is creating a system in which we can test our paths reliably and quickly. So that's the goal for today. We're going to make a custom inspector to make it so that it's very easy for us to say these are going to be the starting faces on these cubes and these are going to be the starting orientations on these cubes. So, oh, let's say the name here. So I guess without further ado, let's get started. When creating a custom editor, I'm going to create a custom inspector for this for our cube face spawner. If you remember, our cube face spawner is really simple right now. We just have six starting faces, and these are required for the for the developer to remember which spot goes to which face, and that's not quite what we want. Um, do we also have Okay, so we do have a rotation, and we do have a direction here. Okay, so that's kind of nice. But we're going to change this. Sorry, my cat wants to escape the room. There we go. Um, so we're going to modify this so that it looks a lot prettier and a lot more user, I guess, designer friendly. So we're going to create a new folder called editor. This is where all of our custom editor code is going to go. And this is a special folder that Unity will recognize. And this script is going to be our cube face spawner editor. So when you're dealing with editor work, there's a couple things we got to do. Add a using directive for the Unity editor. <clears throat> and then for the class, instead of inheriting from mono behavior, we're going to inherit from editor. And then at the top here, we're going to say custom editor property. And this is going to be editing a type of cube face spawner. Pretty simple. The next thing we need to do is override. Okay, thank you, Windows. Override Unity's on inspector GUI function. On inspector GUI. <clears throat> and usually at the top here, let's just do a quick test. Um, draw default inspector. And then let's do an editor GUI layout label. Hello, custom editor. And so hopefully this loads without any errors. I look at my cube and here we go. You can see, hello, custom editor. Okay. I think eventually we're going to want to get rid of these. Oh, actually, these starting faces might be exactly what we want. Maybe what we can do is we could hide this in the inspector, this starting faces, and then our custom inspector will allow the user to pick and select things and then pass that data on to the target. So let's see. I do believe what we can do is, let's do a button here, editor GUI layout button, oh, maybe we just need a 
editor layout, GUI layout dot button. And we'll do a test rename here. And if this button is clicked, we're going to run a section of code. And we're looking for the cube face spawner. Equals target as cube face spawner. <clears throat> and we'll just rename the cube face spawner that we have selected. We'll rename that game object to test. Let's give that a shot. So here's our test rename. We'll watch the name up here. There we go. Nice. Okay. So we're no, we know that we're able to edit this specific game object. We know we have access to all of these specific components and their unique variables. Let's rename that back to cube. So what we need to do is, I guess let's make it as simple as possible at first. Simple is always good. Start with the smallest use case and work your way up. So to me, the simplest thing we could test is just the top face. So we can get rid of these two things. Our testing has been successful so far. And I think we want an editor GUI layout enum pop-up. And this should allow us to select which one of the face types we want. Now I'm not too sure where I want this enum to live. So I'm just going to put it in here, but let's make a note. Uh, oh boy, wrong project. Oh my goodness. Should we move this to a better location? But for now, we'll just make an enum and we'll call this path type. And we've got a couple different path types. We have our L path. We have our L diagonal. So that goes from corner to corner with a 90 degree bend. We have a straight path. We have a straight diagonal. Corner to corner, no bend. And then I'm going to call these a half curve. Right and half curve left. So these are the pieces that we have now, our path types that are currently available. Private path type, um, we'll just call this type. So we've got our enum now. Let's implement this pop-up. <clears throat> So a lot of editor's stuff is kind of strange. What you have to do is you have to say, or this function is going to return the new value. So if the user ever modifies what's in this pop-up, type will have the new value. And we also pass it as an argument. So we pass it as an argument that's the current type. That's what the user is going to see drawn there. Then whenever we change it, this function returns the new value. So the next time through, this will draw the newly selected value. A little bit weird. Uh, you'll see this sort of set up in a lot of the things that we do, where we pass it a value and catch the value to see if it ever changes. Uh, we are going to need to cast this as a path type. Actually, let's do a C sharp style cast. Whoa! Ah, we can't use as because it is not a class. So we're going to have to use old school casting. So let's see how that looks. Uh, 
Cool, path type, and we've got our things here. You can see we change it, and life is good. Okay. <clears throat> We're also going to want a rotation. But I don't actually want this to be a float input field. The way that I'm designing this is all of the faces must be aligned to the world axes. So only 90 degree turns are possible. So I think what I'm going to do is have this rotate amount. And I'm only going to draw this rotate amount. Instead of giving a float field, what I think I'd like to do is editor, and I think I need a GUI layout button. And these are going to be my spin it left and spin it right buttons. And this label is going to be rotate amount to string. What don't you like about that? Cannot implicitly, oh right, <clears throat> there is no if here. And let's see. I don't think I want a colon there. Unity doesn't have colons. No, it does not. So you can see here these big buttons with our arrows. They look pretty gross. I think what I'd like to do is, um, let's begin a horizontal area. And then let's end the horizontal after this. Let's see how that looks. So that should force them all onto one line. <clears throat> cool. Um, it's not centered. I really don't care too much about that. Although this looks pretty, pretty nice. Okay. It's an interesting concept. <clears throat> I'm curious to see, let's just do some rotate amount. So to the left, we'll say minus equals 90. Rotate amount plus equals 90. <clears throat> but I'm curious if I click the button, if it's going to update the inspector GUI again. Hmm. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's wrap it around. <clears throat> so we'll wrap rotate amount. So if it's greater than or equal to 360, we will subtract 360 from it. If it's less than zero, we will add 360 to it. And these are in degrees, so that should make things nice and happy. So this should go from 270 to zero. Nice. 90 to 270, awesome. So I guess our next order of business, we want to, 
Well, we've got a couple options here. We could say when the user clicks the button, like maybe we have some button at the bottom that says update faces. I think I like that a little bit better. Thunderbutt, I just let you out of the room. Sorry. She is a little bit demanding sometimes. Um, so this button is going to be update faces. And if that happens, we got a couple things that we need to do. I'm seriously considering changing how my cube prefab is laid out because hmm. what we want to do is when they click the button do we want to delete the faces if the face already exists destroy it update it well, I don't know. Let's just try it with one, right? That seems fair. So, we know our... Oh, we need our target again, don't we? Cube face spawner current... Mm, maybe we'll just do this target with a capital T. Okay. And what's the simplest thing we can test? <clears throat> so we're going to need a link between these path types. and our prefabs what's the best way to do that maybe have a dictionary so the key is the path type and the value is the game object the prefab that we want to spawn Path type prefabs map prefab map. Oh, uh, wrong language dictionary. And then in awake, and you know what? This is something that's going to be shared between all of the cube face spawners. Wait, do we already have this cube face spawner? What's going on in here? So we have an array of our face prefabs, but they're not actually linked to any... You know what? Maybe we should just do this in here. I like that a little bit better. And we already have this face prefabs loaded bit. And here is our cube face direction. Okay, okay, this is looking... Um... Yeah, let's move this to the spawner. So there's our path type. And we'll move this dictionary. Let's get rid of the rest of these. Oh, hey, there we go. So we're about to break some stuff. <clears throat> let's make this public. Oh, you know what? Let's not delete this guy. I like that plan. 
let's leave them in here. Let's say um, this is deprecated. So eventually we plan on not using this anymore. So let's find awake. If the prefabs have not been loaded, this loads all of them into there. I don't think we need this print anymore. And here we'll say load specific faces into dictionary. Not too happy about this, but we might need to copy paste. <clears throat> yeah, I think that might need to happen. Um, so what did I call that? Prefab dictionary add. In the path type, let's do our L first. <clears throat> And the thing we want to do is resources.load game object. Ugh. And we're going in path faces, and I called this. I'm going to have to look that up. Resources, path faces, L path face. So we've got our L diagonal. We've got our straight, straight diagonal. Ooh. Then we got a half curve left and a half curve right. So this half curve left and right, I've just called them half turn A and B. And technically, I guess it's down and up. If we're looking from the default perspective, Let's change that. Okay, so we've got our we've got it changed. Next step. Let's update these names here. And let's update them in Unity as well. Half curve face up. Oh, geez. Is this up? <laughs> it's down. Okay. Half curve up path face. I don't have a diagonal straight, do I? Huh. Down path face. I hope you can't hear Thunderbutt making cleaning noises in the background. They are quite, quite bad to listen to. Okay, so actually maybe what we can do is I'll copy this straight path face here just for testing purposes. Let's change the mesh to, where is that? We've got meshes and I think my face is probably hiding this. Can I? Let's slide this up just in case. Maybe I didn't export it. That would be bad. There's our diagonal L. Normal L. Goal post. Very happy about that. 
Huh, yeah. I never exported my diagonal. That's funny. Maybe I never even made it. Ooh. That's on my list of things to do. Uh, check and ensure straight diagonal path has been made. There we go. <clears throat> I'm going to leave it out for now. We don't really need it to test stuff. Okay, back to the naming. L diagonal path face. I'm going to use some copy pasta here. And then we've got our straight. Actually, let's put this as null. Move it down to do. Add this mesh type. And we're just not gonna not gonna do anything with it for now. And then we've got our half curve up and our half curve down. Here we go. So we've got our dictionary set up. Is this a public dictionary? It is. That means that our cube face spawner editor should have access to it. <clears throat> so, when we spawn, we might need access to this other big thing that we built, cube face direction up. Now, unfortunately, oh, yeah, we'll just always get up. Cube face spawn data. OK. OK. And this will be public. Let's rename this. Face dictionary is not great. This is face default offset dictionary. OK. <clears throat> So this is a cube face spawn data. And this lives in the cube face spawner face default offset dictionary at cube face direction. Oh, that's not at. This is at dot up. So here's our spawn data. Our cre prefab. Our prefab is going to be the path type prefab dictionary at type. Is that what I called it? Let's rename this to selected path type. Much better. So now I've got a prefab. We've got our spawn data. Let's make it. So we're going to instantiate the prefab at spawn data dot no maybe we need a vector three zero here and then we want the spawn data dot rotation
And the parent of this new face, let's call it that. Is not spawn data target with a capital T, and I want to find the face container. So that's something I'm a little bit worried about. Our face container has no concept of which face lives where, right? And that is a problem because if I modify the thing on the top. I want to know to replace the face that's on the top of the cube. But I guess for now, for testing, we'll just make new face a child of the target, and then new face position equal to the spawn data offset. The reason I did it in that order is I wanted to, oh, you know what? Let's try it this way. Let's just give it the offset here. I think that by, by passing the offset to instantiate, we should be able to, I think Unity will handle this for us under the hood. Let's uh, see. Oh, we can get rid of this test. And this is not at zero, zero, zero. So if we've done something wrong, our face should show up over here in theory. And I want a straight. Oh, what do we get? Oh, no. So it's angry because our prefab dictionary has not been set up. And our prefab dictionary has not been set up because our cube face spawner does it in the awake, right? And we're not in play mode. So I do think we're going to need to move this back to the editor. Wah, wah. Okay. We're going to use on enable. Uh, on enable, on disable is essentially the awake and destroy for editor stuff. <clears throat> Oh, how do these static bools work in editors? Ooh, that is bad. So we need a way for our Our editor to access the prefabs, but that prefab should be in a dictionary. And that dictionary needs to be created during edit mode, not during play mode. Well, let's see what happens here. I have no idea. So we'll move this back.
And if it has not initialized the dictionary, path type prefab dictionary will create a new instance of that. And then we'll move this into that body. Oh. Okay. How about now? So we're building a straight path on the top of our main cube. Aha! I thought so. So I built it over here. You can see it's this straight path face clone. Okay, so let's put this back at vector 3.0. So we'll spawn it at the origin. We'll set the parent. And then we'll offset the position from the origin of the parent. Whoa, that's not what I wanted. Whoa, that's even less. Ah, when we called, instead of doing dot parent equals, we should call set parent. And world position stays, let's put this as false. So our target is target. The world position will not stay. And this is something we're going to have to take care of because right now the user can keep adding, you know, 50 different faces at the same moment. What? What if we just did the local position here? That should just be the offset of the cube. Hey, there we go. So our L is the default L that's walking towards the camera in negative Z. Let's see if our rotation works. So 180. No, it does not. Oh my. Ah, this spawn data rotation is to get the cube rotated around, you know, oriented the right way on the right face. So, oops, what we're going to want to do, end, not hold, new face transform, rotate. And we're going to rotate this by zero, rotate amount zero. And that should be local by default. So this is 180. Dang it. <laughs> Ooh, that's a little bit bad that these are not staying. That's fine. OK. It seems to be happy. I put it to zero, goes back to its original. One step closer. Okay, so our next order of business. I think what we're going to need is we're going to need empty game objects for each face.
Oh, dang. You know what? These face objects might be exactly what we want. I think with these objects, we can totally get rid of all of this crazy stuff. Let's try it. Let's try it with just one. Well, let's try it with two. So our right face, this is going to be positive on the X by half radius. And then I want to rotate it 90 degrees along the Z. What? Ooh, local. Hey, not good. Negative 90. This should be fine. Okay, good, good. Hold on, we've got a couple moving pieces here. Let's just list out the things that we need. We've got our cube, our face container with our faces. So I think our Our spawner should have a dictionary of directions and transforms so that we can say, hey, give me the up transform and get that position and rotational data back. Hmm. Let's see, let's call this big change testing. Does this need to be static? Uh, yes. You face direction, transform, face transform dictionary. Oh, this cannot be static. Every, oh, but it's going to be this. Mm. We could make it static before because all of these numbers are never going to change. They can be shared between all of the face spawners. However, <clears throat> oh, we need actually need a cube. Where do we get that cube? Here's our face face container. So our cube face spawner is doing this face container modification. Oh dear. I'm almost tempted to just make a new script. A lot of changes going on. I don't want to break our old stuff. Let's think about how we want to use it. So, if I were using it, this would be a transform, and this would be target. 
I would still pass it up. We would get the new transform. We would get the prefab. And then we could set the new prefab to be a child of this specific transform. Which means that if we have access to this transform, then we can Dang. This is the same problem as before. We're not in play mode. Maybe we could just use a find, right? If we have all of these faces, Whoa. Right face, down face. And let's duplicate this for our left face. And did I name this front, forward, and back? Up, right, down, left, forward, back. Cool. So this is 0.5 forward on the Z. And I think the rotation, let's put this back to zero. This wants to be 90 on the X. And this would be negative 90 and negative 0.5. Okay. I'm just going to turn this cube off. We've only got one cube. One thing at a time. I can delete him. Okay. Whoa. Oh, I only deleted the mesh. Okay, so we've got our faces, offsets and directions are looking solid. If I scaled up the cube, these should still be correct. Nice. So when they update faces, I'm going to look for the up face. Face transform, and this is in our target transform find child face container cube face direction. Direction equals, let me make this up. What don't you like about this? Use find instead. Okay, yeah, that is fair. So we find the face transform. We don't need the spawn data anymore. We build the prefab. Um, no rotation. We don't need the local position. We do want to rotate the new face. Let 
then we'll say if the child count is greater than zero, then we're going to destroy the child. And let's do a note here. This assumes one base per container. Hopefully you were able to follow that. That was a lot of typing. Now, if I press L, ooh, object reference face transform. Okay, so that failed. Let's see what this calculation yielded. Oh, it should be face, right? Yeah, we're looking for face. And we can't print. We have to debug log because we are in the editor. Nice. What if we rotate it? It should destroy this one. It did not destroy it. But it did add the new one. Destroy may not be called from edit mode. Use destroy immediate instead. Hmm. Good to know. Destroy immediate. Oh. <laughs> Rotate it. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Oh, let's test it with other shapes, right? Oh, there is no straight diagonal. Cool. Okay. So now all we need to do is get this working for all six faces. What happens if I... Right, that's going to look bad. Yeah, that's a problem. So these are being reset. Hmm. Well, you know what? I think this is a good place to stop for now. We made some progress, not as much as I was hoping to make. But hopefully, maybe even later tonight, depending on how the rest of my work goes, hopefully we'll be able to get all six of those faces uh, spawning and editing nicely. Yeah, and I think once we've got that working, it should be very easy for us to start testing our pathing and making sure all of that works. And we can test our edge cases really easily without having to pray that we stumble upon some random seed and saving that. So we made a little bit of work. Uh, that's it for today. My name is Billy Graben, and I will see you next episode.